Tonight uh, we have uh, a talk, uh, John Lester giving a talk on Peter Singer's uh, uh, famine affluence and morality, and, free ref and he's going to give free refutations of Singer's views on these. With that, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Uh, three libertarian refutations in particular. Well, of Singer's yeah. ideas. <clears throat> uh, in my first year at university, uh, the Introduction to Moral Philosophy course included various texts <coughs> on world poverty, killing versus letting die, abortion, and uh, various similar matters. My responses to all of these issues led me to develop one type of libertarian position on morals, although I did not fully realise that that was what it was at the time. <coughs> At the end of that year, I submitted an article to Philosophy and Public Affairs, applying the fundamental argument to abortion. It was not accepted, and I never did find a better place to explain that argument. It now seems to me uh, that the fundamental argument is still highly relevant, and as a response to Singer's famous 1972 article on famine, affluence, and morality, <coughs> Uh, which was one of the original papers and still highly influential is anyway it's still worth well worth responding to that however in another talk uh, I hope to apply the same fundamental argument plus two others to the issue of abortion um, at the time um, I think it may even have been in the first term uh, David McDonough and I happened to be in uh, doing this, this same course and what were the you know, philosophical analysis of what do we do about world poverty and whatever. And, anyway, and I, I took the politically correct line uh, and I got an A plus. And uh, David took the libertarian line and got a fail. I think it was a fail. A mark of naught. A mo naught, <laughs> yes. not even an F, mark of naught. Because <laughs> yeah. subsequently he persuaded me that he was right and I was wrong. And if I were to go back and take that uh, again, I'll get another. I'll get Michael North. I'll fail. Yeah. The first refutation: the relevant principle is implicitly contractual. I'm going to quote Singer's article at appropriate junc junctures, and then uh, <coughs> re immediately reply. I begin with the assumption that suffering and death from lack of food, shelter, and medical care are bad. I agree. If it is in our power to prevent something bad from happening without thereby sacrificing anything of comparable moral importance, we ought morally to do it. It might be morally good but there need be no moral obligation, as we shall see, it will usually be supererogatory, going beyond duty. This principle seems almost as uncontroversial as the last one. This is always Singer speaking. In the final analysis, at least, it cannot be philosophically relevant whether a principle is uncontroversial. Some <coughs> uncontroversial principles might be mistaken and some controversial principles might be correct. But in any case, it can hardly be almost as uncontroversial that we have, by implication, such a general and huge uh, obligation to prevent any and all bad things from happening around the entire world. It requires us only to prevent what is bad and not to promote what is good. As the implied obligation is huge to prevent any lack of food, shelter and medical care around the entire world is only a small part of it, the only uh, would be a limit that might never be reachable, at least until a free market progress eventually abolishes such bad things, more of which later. There is also the problem of whether or how far to prevent what is bad and not to promote what is good is a clear or even coherent distinction. Isn't lack of food a bad thing and having food a good thing? 
By contrast, to the extent that Augustine is right, a bad thing is never a real presence, but only the absence of a good thing. And we cannot all have every good thing, except possibly God, but that's another argument. However, the clarity and coherence of this distinction need not be explored further here. And it requires this of us only when we can do it without sacrificing anything that is, from the moral point of view, comparably important. In other words, we have to strive to alleviate all of the bad things in the world only up to the point where we are in almost as bad a condition ourselves. That is, we only have a moral obligation to behave as a virtual saint. No religious meaning is intended. This is clearly interpretable as a type of reductio ad absurdum in the loose sense of the word. It leads to a, an absurd conclusion and therefore there must be something wrong with the argument. But not in the strict logical sense of the term deriving a contradiction. It, this thereby naturally suggests that another principle altogether might be the correct one. However, it is often possible to embrace an apparent absurdity and interpret such a non-contradictory reductio as a genuine and remarkable insight. And that is what Singer did and still does. And so do all of his followers. Singer then puts the central and famous article, sorry, argument, uh, that is still used and much cited today. An application of this principle would be as follows. If I am walking past a shallow pond and see a child drowning in it, I ought to wade in and pull the child out. This will mean getting my clothes muddy, but this is insignificant, while the death of the child would presumably be a very bad thing. <coughs> This is the argument, you'll hear it time and time again. You'll see it quoted time and time again in books. This does indeed apply Singer's principle. And it applies it to a very persuasive example of where there seems to be a moral obligation. However, this is entirely misleading. <coughs> Just because a theory fits the data and seems plausible or even uncontroversial does not mean that it is the correct theory for the cogency of the moral obligation here does not need to use that general and in the modern globally knowable and accessible world extremely demanding principle admittedly that principle or possibly one covering dire situations, at least, might well be something like the one that Homo sapiens evolved to have, as it would have protected likely relatives, or at least valuable allies, and, and it could be the one that still fits our existing moral intuitions. We have not lived long enough in market societies for our moral intuitions to have evolved to fit them, as Hayek observes. However, the real moral obligation is better explained today in terms of implicit or explicit local rules. In all neighbourhoods, whether solely based on private property or with some political institutions, there are rules as to what is permitted and what is obligatory. By voluntarily entering these neighbourhoods, a person implicitly contracts into accepting those rules. Some of those rules will be explicit, probably written down somewhere, but widely understood as well, and some will be implicit, relying on common sense standards of acceptable behaviour. Such rules usually include an obligation either to help directly or more likely to call for assistance, if no one is, has already done so, in the event of certain temporary extreme emergencies. 
buildings on fire, serious road accidents, criminal activities in progress, and so forth. The rules never include an obligation to assist people in an area of general and sustained emergency, such as uh, famine or deadly disease, as that would keep people away and result in less assistance. A drowning child would constitute one such temporary extreme emergency. Thus the moral obligation here more plausibly rests on this implicit local contract and not on Singer's global and extremely demanding general principle. And if we experience lesser examples of bad things in the neighbourhood, then it will be both widely understood and morally accepted that there is no obligation to assist. Just because you see a child without shoes, you don't have to go and take it into a shoe shop and buy a pair of shoes. But if singers' principles were the correct one, principle was the correct one, then people would expect and feel such obligations even for lesser examples. This then explains one serious mistake in uh, uh, Singer's article and is the first libertarian refutation, that is a refutation using some libertarian type assumptions and arguments. Two, point two, the second refutation the suggested principle is strictly paradoxical. The principle stated and defended in Singer also has implications that allow for another reductio rather than the, just the informal one, that it, it just seems so implausible that you have an obligation to help everyone in the world. And this is at least much closer to being a, uh, uh, capable of generating a contradiction, but the argument is... Uh, debatable. And it goes like this. If not stopping bad things is inherently immoral, not doing what we ought morally to do, then conversely, not starting bad things is inherently moral, doing what we ought morally to do. But it is almost always easier to start more and worse bad things by one's behaviour, theft, fraud, criminal damage, violent assaults, even merely being gratuitously rude or unpleasant, and so forth. Consequently, simply by doing neither, we are either both moral and immoral at the same time, or on balance, Positively immoral, for not sorry, positively moral, for not doing more easily done bad things than we are not doing hard to do good things. It is paradoxical to describe mere inaction as either moral and immoral or on balance positively moral. The paradox is avoided if we make the following more conventional distinction which libertarians, qua libertarians, hold more consistently than most people, or rather distinctions. To proactively promote good things is moral. To proactively promote bad things is immoral, and thereby flouts liberty insofar as these proactively impose costs on people directly or by their property. And to do neither is morally neutral. Because Singer does not consider the converse argument with respect to promoting bad things, he mistakenly arrives at the conclusion that what is not moral must thereby be immoral. He even admits that he's not perfectly moral because he doesn't give all of his money away to the poor, so down to the level where he's suffering just as much as they are. Uh, Anybody who isn't a saint is a bad person, in other words. And a saint is merely ne neutral because they're doing really what you minimally ought to do. So it mistakenly arrives at the conclusion that not what is not moral must thereby be 
immoral. It leaves no conceptual room for the possibility of moral neutrality, otherwise known as innocence. This is the second libertarian refutation. And it is the same basic argument, relevantly adapted, that I also apply to the issue of abortion on a later occasion with luck. Singer goes on to say, if we accept any principle of impartiality, universalizability, equality, or whatever, we cannot discriminate against someone merely because he is far away from us. <coughs> there are common confusions in ethics concerning all of these entirely different things. Impartiality, universalizability, equality, and probably, or whatever. Impartiality is always contextual. We can only be impartial in the application of the rules towards which we are first partial, or at least somehow obligated. So in the drowning child, or temporary extreme emergency case, we are contractually obligated to act with impartiality in the sense of taking no account of the identity of the child or of the people or nature of any other relevant emergencies. Similarly, universality is always contextual. An obligation universally covers all people and situations mentioned in the relevant principle and not people and situations that are outside it. As for e equality, that, as usual, has nothing to do with anything except in the vacuous sense that all contractual obligations are prima facie equally binding unless some hierarchy is stated or implied, perhaps. None of the specified terms necessarily imply considering in themselves all of the people in the world. Uh, of course, Singer is a utilitarian, and utilitarianism is going on in the background, uh, and he sort of thinks that impartiality, universal, you know, this must lead to utilitarianism. But I'm only taking the text as it's written. I'm not going to go into utilitarianism as such. And even if they were contingently or by assumption to be about everybody in the world, that would still leave the question of with respect to what principle? Are you being impartial or universal or whatever? It's just the, the question does not answer itself. Consequently, we can and even must discriminate against people who are not covered by any relevant contractual principle, at least until any contractual obligations have been met. 2.3. The third refutation. Free markets best solve real major evils problems. Every time I read him talking about major evils, I think of uh, Vicky Watsit on Little Britain. Uh, which is unfortunate because it's a very serious topic. <laughs> Vicky, what's her name? Uh, it's not, uh, it was Vicky Pollard. You yeah. Were, you're giving me a pause. <laughs> Singer then asserts that most of the major evils, poverty, overpopulation, pollution, Over I'm quoting, are problems in which everyone is almost equally involved. This is the kind of, um, I look upon Singer and Derek Parfit as a sort of secular Christians, except you have all of the duties, but none of the promised hereafter. You're not gonna get, you're, not gonna, you're just gonna suffer. If you don't suffer, you're a bastard. No, you're not gonna go to heaven. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna get any virgins or sultanas or whatever. Um, depending on your interpretation, uh, uh, translation of the Quran. But this is much more secular Christianity, which is odd because both Singer and Parfit spend a long time attacking Christianity, but they take the moral heart of it and embrace it. 
Global poverty and pollution are, on average, reducing all the time. I think it's officially hundreds of uh, thousands of people are coming out of poverty every day according to some objective standard recognised by the UN or various official organisations. With more libertarian-like property rights and thereby greater growth, they would be reducing even faster. It is a myth that there is any overpopulation as such. A spontaneously growing global population based on individual reproductive choices in the specific circumstances, as long as they're not being subsidised, aids economic growth due to the greater division of labour. Popular books, for instance, Simon's The Ultimate Resource, second edition in 96, Lomberg's Skeptical Environmentalist, second edition in 2001, and Stephen Pinker's um, Rationalism Now, is it, I think, uh, 2018, all more or less explain these points. But these uh, are not libertarian texts, and they do need some uh, libertarian text to supplement them, not least economics, of course, but a certain amount of philosophy as well. The highly detailed evidence and arguments in these books can't be rehearsed here. Uh, but on the assumption that that's the case, then to the extent that everyone is almost equally involved, it is not in terms of proactive culpability, but rather the unintended beneficial effects of free markets within countries and free trade among countries, insofar as politics or each state allows this to happen. The solution to real major evils is not effective altruism, so I shouldn't put quote, that's not Singer, that's the movement that sprung up based on the child in the pond argument, as the, uh, the, uh, in particular associated with Singer's writings generally. The solution is not the effective altruism where you give away as much as you can, you get as high a paying as job as you can and you give away as much as you can live with. The solution is rather laissez-faire capitalism in the libertarian sense that protects people and their property. How are we doing for time? Uh, okay, I think uh, it's not a much more anyway. Uh, some libertarians suggest that free migration should not be restricted. I won't bother going through a list, though I have one. Uh, they tend to hold that this is an important part of the libertarian solution to global poverty and so forth. But this seems to be mistaken for two main reasons. First, to have open borders on your country is analogous with having open doors in your home so that anyone can enter at any time. It would create very destructive externalities against you. In the case of countries, hundreds of millions of people would soon enter the wealthier ones, literally hundreds of millions, and very soon, and thereby reduce those countries to similar levels of poverty, crime, disease, etc., as were in many of the countries they had left. The full libertarian solution is to have private property in all land so that the owners can decide on their rules of entry. Some owners might invite some cheaper workers to their farming or factory areas, for instance, but those workers would not thereby have access to anywhere else without the relevant landowner's permission. In the absence of this full libertarian solution, various state restrictions on immigration can be better than nothing in order to approximate to this, however imperfectly. Uh, but it would take uh, a separate talk and probably a lot of empirical economics to discuss and rank possible state restrictions rather than simply having private property solve the problem. Second, and related, if there were to be general free trade around the world, 
then capital would be more likely to make its way to employ the cheap labour where it is. And this would soon raise living standards in those areas to approach a new global norm. This movement of capital is cheaper, easier, and less of a proactive imposition for all concerned uh, than open borders with state-owned streets, services, etc. Trade war warriors hold that even free trade can proactively impose on the existing population in a similar way to free migration. But free trade is quite different. I do not proactively impose on you if I buy imported foreign products. You proactively impose on me if fire politics you can prevent me from doing so. The boost to the economy that free trade allows will ultimately raise the general living standards of all people in the country and any frictional unemployment is a temporary loss. If trade barriers really were liberal and economic, then we should impose them within countries just as much as between any two countries. Into the foreseeable future, there will always be room for charity that can do real good around the world. But charity, at most, puts the cherry on the cake. The free market, which strictly must include free trade, creates the ever-growing cake. Those people engaged in charitable giving, effective altruists, often would do better to start new businesses uh, for the people in needy areas, or at least spend some of their time campaigning for more free trade with those areas. Singer does not grasp that free markets are far and away the best solution uh, to any real major evils problems. So this is the third libertarian refutation and the rest of uh, Singer's article raises no more issues than this triple, triple refutation needs to address. Thank you. Paul? Uh, would Bond be right in detecting a small hopping shift? Towards the, end, towards the end of your uh, the room. towards the end of your talk there on uh, yeah. immigration, um, yeah. because I understand the argument, it, and it's similar to what Hopper proposes against free trade, and it's against the Walter Block, who's in favour of free free movement of people. Yes, and I'm sure you have subtly altered your position there. That I think I detected a small elide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from things you'd said previously, because. You seem to imply it's, it's finally contracted to a moral community, but you've gone from that to saying, and that moral community is the nation state and all of its apparatus and border controls, which mm -hmm. is it's a slightly stronger position. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Do I don't. I don't know. I'm all, no. Yeah. My, my, all I'm saying is, if the choice is between simply opening all the borders mm -hmm. and letting in literally hundreds of millions of people would come just to this country I mean, if, if this we did it on our own uh, or some state restrictions however arbitrary and silly uh, and imperfect then those restrictions would be better than simply opening the border and closer to libertarianism I don't think they're legitimate on the basis of the nation state because I don't believe in the nation state at all. Uh, uh, I simply have to admit that the state can do more libertarian-like things and less libertarian-like things and sometimes people want an answer on, well, you, and you can't always just say, no, 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 I refuse to say anything about the state, I'm only going to tell you about my libertarian fantasy world. Uh, yeah, well, can do that, but sometimes it, you want to show them how we get there from here and so forth. Um, yes, well, on, on this immigration idea, it's interesting enough, I don't think, that 
the objection most people have is not to all these deep foreigners and their strange <coughs> ways, but they're coming over here and they're getting instant welfare rights. Oh, yeah. And that, of course, would not apply at all if they're yes. a libertarian organ. And also, rents would, accommodation might become rather expensive if too many pile in. Or even too has, people. because well, they it have. It depends, <laughs> yes, it is more like a Hong Kong. Yeah. Yes, that it might be the case. And, and no one else was being as open. Yes, that's true, that might have all happened. But even in that case, Hong Kong is not such a bad place to live. I would have thought, compared to many places uh, people are coming from, mm. it's not a bad place to be living in when people turn up. Yeah. But I don't think you're disputing the idea that you could... The objection is not that they can't. Well, perhaps you aren't saying that. No, oh, no I'm still not, well, I, I actually included... Right. I included the idea that, uh, given that there are all these, the, steep, the state owns the streets and there are all these state services and handouts and they're not going to go, um, that's a, one reason why you can't simply open the gates. I mean, the Mallet Street would be everywhere, all over London. There would just be people sleeping in the streets. There would be theft everywhere. There would be, they, they, they would leave until it was as bad here as wherever they came from, taking into account the fact that the weather's a bit worse here. <coughs> that, you know, they do a perfect economic calculation and it, this place would be awful. Uh, however, um, if you had complete free market, um, I don't actually think it would make a lot of sense to invite them over here, as, because if you had free trade, you, what, you, why make them come over here? They don't want to come over here. It's much easier for you to go over there and build the factories there and employ them there. But some people would want to, for, you know, his strawberry farm is here and somebody's going to pick his strawberries. Okay, so we fly them all over, give them all accommodation. There might even be a route by which you can then move on to other things. <clears throat> Probably there would be. There would be other people who say, well, if you can show that you've worked in this country for a year, then you can come and come into our area as well. We allow that. If you can show that you're, you know, you're a person who's got a credit card or something. You know, uh, all kinds of... Uh, uh, there's a, be a, a levels of, of, of places where you, it would be acceptable for you to go and probably... Uh, you, know, you could start at the bottom and work your way up. The idea that you just know anybody can go anywhere. Uh, you know, but well, this is really a whole other debate, and not really focusing on um, Singer's article. Though, yeah. Uh, Nico, and then. Yeah, Nico, and then. Yeah, not surprisingly, I, I don't want to draw on this, but. Uh, uh, I, I disagree with, with your scenario that we would have complete chaos and poverty here when we yeah. open the borders because we have quite a lot of, of, of market in it. And we, we have a lot of, most properties are owned privately, most houses are owned privately, most land is, is owned somewhat privately, mm -hmm. where you can already kick off. And in, in this, if, if they are in the streets, well, then you would very quickly see laws against that instead of closing the borders. So there are lots of alternatives if you really... So, so no, sorry, the laws against what? Allowing people to be in the streets? Yeah. Well, you streets. said they would all be in the streets and... Would well, yeah. Be, uh, I mean, now you can now see uh, lots of East Europeans in the street, begging in the street, sleeping in the street. Uh, multiply that by millions. And if you say you can't be in the street, well, where do they go? Well, maybe back to where, where they come from. Then you have a free market at work. And, uh, well, not while well, it's a state I, street. Mm -hmm. If there's a state street, that's, a big, that's the big interference with the free market. That, you know, that <coughs> yeah, the state decides who, what the rules are on the street. But those rules, just because they make the rule, they aren't necessarily enforceable. Well, then you have to send problems. The I mean, I was, uh, somebody tried to mug me in Trafalgar Square picked my pocket actually it was a team and um, you know this uh, they were some kind of East Europeans I couldn't be we didn't have a long conversation so I'm not <laughs> sure um, so but you know uh, that's that that's what you get that's how they a lot of them are gonna do because it's the easiest way to make yeah, money when you arrive is by illegal activity I don't think so I think most if, if there was open borders they could organize 
whether they could stay here. They, they didn't need to do what they were doing right now, somehow get on the other side and then see what happens on the other side. Mm. They, they would organize their trip long before they would make the journey, yeah. which is which is what, what, what a sensible thing it is. So and with criminals, you need to deal with, with a yeah. proper justice yeah. system. But I don't want to yeah. get it, I, mean, this is, if not, I think you're making a mistake though, and yeah. this is something that was bothers me about this whole yeah, yeah. Uh, libertarians arguing um, in, in, in favor of, of, of closed borders so much, because yeah. I think the argument that Singer makes is is very appealing to a lot of people. This this altruistic that you need to help people, and and what is what, is, what and in my um, experience being in this movement for a while, yeah. this is the hardest bit to to communicate with people that libertarians are not against poor people that there are. Uh, advocating a system in which poor people would do very well, they would do better than under a welfare state. Of course. And I think the, the closed border crowd in libertarianism is completely making a, 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 a public relations error, if not, I mean, I disagree with them also on the arguments, mm. but if anything, they're, they're really making a public relations error because here is, an, it is a thing where libertarians could really show that they are on the side of poor people and, and, um, and, and the state is exactly on, well, a, on, on a side of, of keeping, of, of being against these well, people. There are two ways. And, and libertarians, yeah. amazingly, yeah. Is, even though they never take the side of the state on any other issue, mm. when it comes to closing the, the doors for poor people, they yeah. suddenly take the side of, of, of the state. This yeah. is such a PR disaster. Oh, I don't think I'm taking the side of the state. I mean, I would say, you know, anybody who owns any private land should be able to fly in people from any part of the world uh, to occupy that land for the purposes of work or anything else. Um, I, I mean, I, there are various things you can say concerning how this will benefit poor people, but uh, I, I, it, with the state, it's, it's, if, this, if it's simply anybody comes in or there are some restrictions, then some restrictions looks a bit more limited. Like, you don't like the analogy of the, uh, you know, having doors on your house. I mean, you, you, or, 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 and your bedroom, for instance, uh, to stop people just walking in. I mean, it's, you want to keep people out. Uh, yeah, but, I want to, but I yeah. don't want the state to put a lock on my, on my door so that every time I have to go into my house, have to uh, consult a, a state authority. Yeah, you want to have be in control that of your door. Is not, that yeah. is not, you want to be in control of your own front door, so you decide who comes in. Mm -hmm. I'd also like that extended to the end of my road, so that the uh, committee decides who, 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 uh, whether fine. somebody's invited and who can get in. So, or at, the, at the moment, anybody can walk up and down my road, and they drop litter, and they cause a certain amount of nuisance, and they've got, they're just using it as a thoroughfare, and it's completely unnecessary. They could, there are other major roads they could take. It take them one minute more, but uh, we don't have that. Uh, so, uh, if the state would say we're going to block off all the streets and make people walk around using just the major ones as thoroughfares, I would say, oh, well, that would be an improvement on what we have now. Because what we have now is a bit of... In but then that's, sim that's like saying if the state creates the country as a gated community, that might be better than what we have now. But... Um, well, better for whom? It's, but, it's special yeah. interest policy, you know. You you think you would be better off, but but there are lots of people yeah. who, would be, who would be much worse. But, but, but ultimately, of course, I think is it, is it's uh, from a libertarian point of view, it's academic because they wouldn't want to come here if we had free trade. Why on earth would you want to if we had uproot yourself yeah. if we had global free trade? Yeah. Now, and uh, to get back to the. Singer, I mean, global free trade is what these people really, really need. And uh, the yeah. European Union is not helping. Uh, European Union, they I mean, they should be absolutely outraged by the poverty that is maintained because we simply have to trade among European states uh, to such a considerable degree. This is World War One that did it. Really. Yeah, great point about the EU. So my question is um, two parts. Firstly, how would you be able to stop 
immigrants um, moving along public rights of way. And these public rights of way in the UK have been public rights of way often for hundreds of years. It's not clear how they could be privatised in a legitimate way. And the second part of my question is, uh, what about um, immigrants moving to uh, wilderness areas where, where it's not economic to homestead that land, but then being able to impose costs on neighbouring own property, for example, how it's put fences and security, etc., etc. Um, a lot of the public right of way uh, could be better dealt with if it were uh, collectively privatised, as it were. If you can put, like a charity, certain people in charge of it, and then they can control how it operates in the interests of what it has always existed for. Uh, now, whether they're going to let these people through and not those people, I don't know. Uh, but the, but, but, uh, uh, but yeah. public right of way as such, it just is absolute. No, I mean, similarly, I mean, the ch private charities can own woodlands and so on and so forth. Um, uh, 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 that's a way of a sort of libertarian solution. So in a sense, it's for the good of the public, but there's a responsible private institution uh, which has principles and a charter and so forth rather than simply arbitrary political intervention. When it comes to uh, somebody outside a country, say, pointing to some part of Scotland and say, well, nobody's living there, I want to go and live there. Um, well, now, are we supposing that this is in a libertarian society or...? or yeah, I mean, it's not like in, say, Canada, for example. Right. Place. If it's, I mean, if it's a libertarian society, um, I would expect that very, very quickly people would have some, everything would pretty much be snapped up. So there would be an owner. Say, there would be, be an owner. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth, that might say it wouldn't be worth um, owning that territory because of the cost. Oh, yeah, no, but yeah. They, if they saved up enough money and paid the owner, then they, they'd pay him and they'd move there. I'm saying it's effectively an owned territory, but there are vast swags. Yeah, but they, they're unowned now, but as soon as you, if we were to move to a libertarian society and we said, okay, um, if you start using something in some way, even as a natural wilderness, you're, you're, you're a, a, a place of natural beauty and you're going to charge people entry, you don't necessarily need to do anything to it other than the... In, uh, this, this is getting dodgier and dodgier and thinner and thinner. I, I, can uh, just, I can just put a fence around this big chunk of territory. Yeah, well, it might be. Well, you, uh, if, if your horse needs a paddock, you just put a fence around and you say, well, it's a, it's a paddock for my horse. Uh, now, but maybe you don't have a, a horse. You just say, well, I, I, this is um, a lovely glade of bluebells and uh, I'd, I'd like to own it and nobody's here, so I'll take it into ownership. Um, but it gets to the problem, you know, what, whether it's, <coughs> that obviously isn't homesteading in the original sense. Well, it's not uh, mixing your labour with the uh, with the land, as it were. Um, I, I, I mean, I have a different principle, which is really use, using it. Are you using it? Uh, uh, if, uh, and then, how far you really are using it would be a matter that could be contested in the courts. For instance, if you say, I, so I bought this house, castle, whatever, and I was using this land for up to the horizon, which I think is about 20 miles, as, a, as my view. And then people moved in and you didn't see them because, because the trees were there and they, they've got houses and, and they may contest your use. You may say, well, yeah, he was using it in a sense. Uh, he was using it for his view. Now we're using it for homes. Um, uh, who is imposed on more or less? And it could be that there's some reasonable compensation could be payable. Um, once you get down to the fine details of what counts as an imposition and uh, uh, 
how much compensation has to be paid, then right, what well, then we really are into a libertarian society with a libertarian ju judiciary and so forth. Uh, uh, it's hard to get into the details. Uh, what's the expression I'm searching for? One doesn't write recipes for the cookshops of the future. <laughs> yeah, that's what I Yes. And uh, it's your heart to write recipes. Anyway, just jump in now. What do you mean by that? Tom. 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 Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Tom. Tom. Yeah. Tom. Sorry. Right, so, I, I think a few people here quite disagree about closing the borders, but one of the reasons why I, I think it's it's a just thing to do in the current mixed economy that we live yeah. in is there's so much public ownership of stuff that I paid for. Yeah. And, and other folks want to give it away. Yeah. And I own that. Mm. And uh, you know the, the NHS, the roads, the police, and uh, and things like that that I've already paid for, and they've come in and they're going to take advantage of those facilities yeah. that I've already paid for. Um, I do think if, if people come into the country and are honest, basically honest, don't commit crime, and, and honestly want to work mm. and contribute, and don't take public dole, then they're the type of people you want in the country. You know, but we should get to choose who can join. Yeah, well, that's the sort of political, that's a sort of libertarian approach. Yeah. And I, 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 and at some point, I always want to say, yeah, but this is a sort of compromise. And really, if you if you simply had private property sure. and everything was privatized, then the market would pretty much sort it out. Occasionally, you would have difficult cases where you'd need to discuss legal principles. What is the most libertarian? Thing to do given that he's using this piece of land this way and he's using it that way and then they become a new so they're but up but really private property solves the problems ultimately nation states go away hmm? nation states go away is that what we well ultimately well i mean if you're if you're a private property anarchist yes yeah. oh, that, that's what i, I would advocate so. uh, uh, if you open your borders your population doubles in 10 years what oh, it wouldn't. What is, it, the, what is the but double in ten years—that's a fantasy. If you open your borders, your population yeah. will double in months. Yeah. Months. Weeks. <laughs> the, the people just because and uh, and you say, um, you know, letting in honest people. Well, no. If you open their borders, they'll come here. Now, when they're here, they will make rational economic decisions. Yes, I will take the dole. Yes, I will. Take it in several different names. Yes, I will use the National Health Service and so on and so. On. And yeah, everything will break down. It'll be it'll be a disaster, complete disaster. Uh, uh, um, I wonder what Singer uh, and uh, the effective altruists would say. I presume they would be in favour of of uh, opening the gates. They would say that's what we have to do because that's. Just before, one of the values we have is equality over the world, isn't it? And, you know, where they come from, they don't have that. And even though economically they might not be as, as well off when they move, there may be some downsides. It's one of the reasons why they want to be here, because we have a equality over the law. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not against people uh, migrating. Uh, as I just think that in the absence of full privatisation of all the land, therefore the owner then decides. Crude, but better than nothing, is some sort of limits. Uh, but it's a bit pointless to again get into a debate about what those should be, when really, if you're a libertarian, you just want to say, well, I don't really want the state to decide at all. Because if the owners can decide, that will be that will have a strong tendency to be economically efficient and libertarian because nobody's being imposed on. So, if you want to speak. Death Lev, Pat and Christian, Death Lev. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was just wondering, and may, maybe I get this wrong, but uh, I mean, one of the arguments uh, uh, about free trade in goods and services that I really like, and you used it, which I think is a powerful argument, where you basically say is, if it does make economic sense to have the state control the flow of goods and services, why don't we have that between London and Birmingham? Why yeah. don't we have it within the country? But can you not turn that argument also into the immigration debate where you would say, you know, if it does make sense to stop people from coming to the UK, wouldn't it make sense for the state to control who moves from Birmingham or York to London? 
and uh, and obviously nobody's advocating that. So you would say, like, well, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and my and my, my first guest, sorry, I've, I've been, I'm not yeah. answering my, my question myself, <laughs> but I uh, my my first assumption would be the economic incentives that stop you from moving from York to London is that is so costly, and that's stopping also a lot of people from who live in, in poorer countries from coming to this country because they know, you know, in a free market it's, it's prohibitively expensive, as it is for many people who live in poor parts of Scotland mm. to move to London. I mean, some people do it, as some people will move from poor countries in Africa to London. They also, take the economic costs because yeah. of their economic calculation, mm. but, you know, and those often succeed. Also, they're being subsidised to be where they are. I mean, lots yeah. of money goes to Scotland and Northern Ireland and Liverpool. Yeah. Probably Manchester. But I don't have any facts, but, I, <laughs> but and, that, and that should all be probably. stopped. But equally, you know, you should stop any subsidies for people moving to London or living in London. And yeah. if you take all the subsidies away, yes. those decisions make make entirely economically. Yes, I don't of course. think yeah. that we would be afraid that everybody in Europe moves to London. That won't happen. And I don't think in that case everybody in Africa will move to the UK either. So in that in Oh maybe yeah, of course if you take away if you well, if you take away all of the subsidies, but then is a private road a subsidy? It has to be paid for. If the state owns it, it's paid for by taxation. So, um, yeah, are you assuming that roads are privatised or, 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 or not? Oh, I mean, yeah. obviously, we are libertarians who would yeah. argue for but, but I think lots yeah. of people who own public places, and this is already the case, like, I mean, well, I work in the city, that's clearly the entire state, and all the business buildings, the entire square around it, all that is privately owned. Oh, yeah. And it has private security, yeah. and yet nobody has an incentive to shut it off, because quite the opposite, there are bars there, there are restaurants there, they, you know, there is an economic incentive to mm -hmm. keep it open. Yeah. Uh, but also to keep it well maintained and secure, you know. So yeah. I think you just let the market play. But I, I'm not quite sure if then immigration would necessarily be such a huge problem after all, because well, everybody will make if you said no, no welfare handouts from the state, no NHS. But then we're supposing a very different world. We're supposing we have virtually reached. Uh, libertarian society by supposing that those things have happened. They're not on the cards now. Uh, people still have the delusion that the NHS is the envy of the world and absolutely wonderful. And they haven't looked at all the wonderful IEA <laughs> arguments <laughs> explaining what nonsense this is. But I don't want to take up all the time, but this, that was Milton Friedman's point, if I remember correctly. He basically said, as long as you do have a welfare state, you will have immigration controls. That wasn't it, that is argument. Because he was saying, because that, you know, no. you're not, you disagree, Christian? Yeah, uh, it's, um, I don't think he says necessarily, because he, he mentioned Switzerland. <clears throat> he says that, you know, if you had um, open borders, people would flock to Switzerland. Um, that is the very example that he gives, and um, which is not the sort of state with the most advanced welfare state, but it is one of the most prosperous. Mm. I think that, <clears throat> is it my turn? Uh, well, it, it didn't, but I'll just go ahead and Pat can come afterwards. No, I, <clears throat> I, I, I follow Nico there and, and, and Detlef. I mean, um, I, I don't see this argument whether you have privatized or not uh, privatized streets or, or, or things like this. Um, but what you were saying about, you know, I want to not invite people to my place yeah. and let people come uh, into my house and so mm. on. I want to invite people and let them come to my house. So the argument that Tom behind me was saying that you know people would arrive in this country and then so yeah. on and take all the things yeah, yeah, that yeah. people have accumulated um, is uh, um, an argument that says, well, I cannot invite whom I want yeah. in my house. So I think that mm. yes, I am for controlled immigration. Yes, but. I want to be the controller, Nico wants to be the controller, Paul wants to be the controller. We all want to be the controller. So I don't want to be to have to ask a government official for a visa if I want to invite my girlfriend from Ukraine, my boyfriend from mm -hmm. uh, Brazil, uh, my accountant from India, yeah. or 200 workers from 
I don't know, uh, the, uh, you know, yeah. India. So um, it's, uh, let's, we decide. Then when they come, when they land in this country, they have a job because I've given them a job. Uh, they would probably be agents, uh, like, you know, recruitment agencies mm -hmm. all around the world, um, pinpointing people who might be useful for this bakery here or this bakery in Liverpool or this company there and so on. And that is what, what you want. In other oh, words, yeah. businesses recruit the people who are the most adapted yes. for you know, their business and these people may be in India or they may be in whatever. So there is a disadvantage of a language, there is a disadvantage that you have to fly them over, mm. but you make that calculation that it will be beneficial to you and so on. And if there is a shortage of housing, mm. I mean, this is like saying, um, for property developers, this is like saying, oh my God, uh, people are going to order more houses. Mm. But that is what we want. We want yeah. people building more houses. Uh, we want people opening more restaurants. So all these people who come mm -hmm. are consumers. So they will create more jobs because they will consume. So you will need to have a million more bakery or a million yeah. more loaves of bread every day being baked because you have a million more people living in this country, two million more people living, 10 million more people living mm -hmm. in this country. It would be a step in the, the libertarian direction to allow people to invite people in. Yeah, I completely it's... agree. Uh, that is a bit different if you're saying uh, you're sort of vouching for them and on their working for you and so on. That, that's a bit different from seeing, seeing, simply opening the gates and saying, anybody can come in. That is very different. Uh, uh, I can't disagree with anything that you say, but well, I, then just, then I, I just don't then. see, I just <laughs> don't see that that that, that means, um, uh, I mean, that we shouldn't have any uh, I, 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 controls at all under the current system, the, given that we've got all these state yeah, services and handouts. Yeah, I think that where, where you have a, a, a problem yeah. is precisely with people who argue along non-libertarian lines yeah. who argue on the basis of culture, mm. on the basis of nation. And they would say, oh, it will change the, culture, the yeah. culture of Britain if we have two million people coming from exotic countries, yeah. three million people coming from exotic countries, and yeah. so on. And yes, it will. Yes. But then either you are a libertarian mm. and you see people trade gather together, um, connect together, well, whatever their nationality, but they have other interests. What's that got oh. to do with libertarianism, sorry? Well, it's it's that, it's nothing to do with it. Can, we, can, can we libertarianism want to isolate yourself in your own community? You can, yeah. No, it's, I, can't, I, can't, I can't see why people couldn't uh, have, you know, this is an all Romany gypsy community and we live here and if you don't speak the language, uh, and they can keep. Listen, if if the Amish in America, if the Amish in America yeah. could be so completely, sort of pristine and isolated, the idea that by inviting more people in, that's a threat to you. I don't. I think they're just wrong in thinking it's a threat to them. To them. Mm. They can. If you want to stick together, you can stick together. Absolutely. Uh, the option is there. Absolutely. So I, I, I can't. They're simply mistaken to thinking. Well, that, that's think my that point. Libertarians are mistaken to think that they need to prevent people from associating with whomever they want because they want to associate mm. only with people of a certain ethnicity. Sorry, so, sorry, sorry. Lib you're not talking Lib about culture. Libertarians. Yeah. You're not talking about culture then. Sorry? You're not talking about culture. Yeah, but, but it would be culture. Yeah, so, so, in other words, so, yes. So, so, English, English, English Romani, or. Sorry, sorry. Whatever. Are you saying. You began. Like so, saying, say, libertarians are mistaken. Yeah. So what 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 I'm saying yeah. is that uh, take your example. Yeah. I mean, you're a very good example. Yeah. Amish and Little Englanders yeah. and Scots yeah. and Welsh and mm. whoever mm. uh, people in Brittany in France who want to speak Britain or, or yeah. Basque 
and they are absolutely free to continue doing this. They're yeah. not free because it's freedom of association banned under EU rules, all these anti-discrimination law. Yeah. They're not free to dissociate. Well, well, are we supposing a libertarian society? If, if so, well, even, then they're free. But you're right, at the moment we don't. We don't have an, and you're not. Uh, but even in a, in, a, in, a, in the society of today, I mean... You, well, we still have Golders Green and Tower Hamlets and so forth. Uh, yeah, exactly. An awful lot of voluntary uh, grouping occurs and is a good thing. But, but uh, occasionally you see politicians complaining that it's, uh, these are ghettos and it's terrible. And of course it isn't. These people want to live it's together. Bad, a lot of it's bad. I've got, I've got three speakers. So right. but, and uh, you know, they are, in fact, packed, which are... Yeah. And then Bob, and then this chap at the end. Uh, so, Pat. Yeah, I, I, actually, yeah, I, 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 you jumped into what I was going to just play the devil's advocate and, and suggest if, you, if you're going to control. Uh, well, I thought the devil was away. If you're going to control any controls at all, I would have thought from a libertarian viewpoint, mm. is uh, just to allow those people uh, who are going to come from libertarian countries, of which they're not many. Many. None. <laughs> None. Well, yes, that would be a problem. Say, that's what I would say. <laughs> Donald, Donald, Trump, 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 control, Donald Trump would be That's why he suggests that. that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, bear in mind that uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, you know, founded the United States on libertarian and democratic principles. If they were around today, they'd both be in jail for life for um, growing drugs and selling them. I mean, that's one of many things they, they'd be in jail for. <laughs> But, um, I mean, most, most Americans wouldn't be allowed in, for example. I don't, uh, you, you seem to be yeah. saying that you should either take the credit or the blame for the country you come from. And that's, that seems a bit peculiar. <laughs> well, uh, if you come from a libertarian country, you might not be a libertarian. If you come from a totalitarian country, you might not be a totalitarian. Well, that's, that's the point, actually. You know, yeah. I mean, genuine libertarian refugees would be in that, that, that group as well. But bear in mind, if you, if you do come from a democratic uh, libertarian country, then you're going to take responsibility for that by voting and by uh, uh, you know agreeing with the country, not, not going against it. And so you would have some association with it, at least by letting these people in. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think you're talking in sort of nationalistic terms that really don't fit well with libertarian thinking. Uh, because when you say democratic, you mean to refer to the elected oligarchy and you seem to be and thinking that there's the something good about it and I don't see anything good about it. Uh, hmm? Democratic and libertarian. Well, and, and that's an, and that's and that is an seems to be an inconsistency they, as they well. Do, they do clash. Uh, <laughs> which, which are you? Uh, or even elected oligarchy and libertarian. If you're libertarian, you can do what you like with your person and property, but not with other people's persons and property without their consent. Um, there's no room for democracy or for elected oligarchy or for any kind of state rule. But they, 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 if you ticky-boxed libertarians at the border, I mean, when they, when they did commit the crime against libertarians, at least you'd be able to <laughs> collar them and say, look, look what you ticked. And you didn't do that. At least you know, you'd have some... Well, you'd moral, always be able to um, arrest people for committing <laughs> crimes. And under a libertarian legal system, uh, I think a lot of them would be put to work. Uh, or, if what they did was so terrible they couldn't be put to work, then my favourite for many years now, gladiatorial combat on pay TV. <laughs> that, will, that will get the money out of them. But once they've, once they've accolded by the cop, they can't say, well, you know, my God told me to do it. And then you can say, but you ticky box this. Well, it's sort of... Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, We'd have to do that for citizens as well. Would. You'd have to uh, eventually, yes. Yeah. Well, a contract, I don't, a contract with the state. Yeah, I, I, I don't think a contract with the state is valid anyway. So, uh, it, it's, if you go into, if you become an employee and you sign a, a, a contract with your employer, that seems to be fair enough. But somebody says, you know, we are the state, and you can only come in under these terms. I, I just think that's it's illegitimate. Under, if if it's my under duress. It, yes. Actually, that, that brings you on to another thing, very quickly. Um, when you talk about the um, division of labour and producing the cake, you know, the economic cake and so forth. Well, the free market produces, produces all the wealth. The that, division of labour. Yeah. Um, you know, 
in, in economics, the, the, the duplication of labor, for example, in private police forces, where, or, or even in, in the, where you have trains, for example, and you have duplication of everything. People talk about nationalization to get around that. Um, one of the things uh, where you have an a, a, a all-encompassing police force, mm. there's a way with the duplication of labor, and it ties into this bigger cake. Uh, you know, in, 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 in an economic sense, isn't having some a, a, a kaleidoscope of police forces just duplicating everything? And, no, it's just competition. Your... It's just competition. Uh, it's absolutely. Yes, it's I, com I, 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 I'm all for competition. Trade off between but, economies and scale. Competition, competition yeah. can work yeah. the other way as well, and shrink. Yeah, and which is why, when you, if you leave the market alone, there might be some big players in mm. whether in if it's in police or banks or whatever, but there'll also be room for small players because you're not allowed to get the state to pass regulations to make competition illegal with you or so expensive people can't afford it. People then choose which they want. Now, you say duplication. Um, I mean, there used to be milkmen uh, delivered the milk and sometimes you get two different milk companies delivered to the same street. They could afford to do it, they made money. Uh, it wasn't a problem. It's not wasteful duplication, it's useful competition for the most part. If it really were wasteful, then there would be a natural tendency in the market for somebody to say, I, I want to buy both of these and unite them. And if they won't do that, then maybe it's just good competition. Well, so, um, and then... Back to the child of the pond, possibly. Yes. Um, one answer to that is to have, for the park to be a a, a pay for it park. Well, that yes, obviously. And, uh, and yeah. there's a park keeper who's wandering about, or a lifeguard, or such. Um, mm. That's one point. The second point is that um, how wealthy are we? How many guards can we afford? Are there no life? Are there no life boys? Are there no lifelines? Are there no railings around the pond? Uh, it's taken for granted that somehow... But what about your responsibility? Yes. This is the key thing. You you see the child drowning in a shallow pond. Do you have a responsibility to help it? And if you do, can you characterise that response? Is it simply the general principle that Singer gives us? Or can you say it's contractual? Because it's going to be a private park or near as damn it a private well, park. That's an interesting bit, which is, Sorry. given that the railings have to be paid for and the park keeper has to be paid for and the railings around them have to be paid for and the life boy has to be paid for and the rest of it and maintained and the people kept in the water. Um, Singer is neglecting the fact that all of this is capital and human capital and then there could be a lot more of it if the country were richer, or the people were richer, or people were more productive. And they could be more productive if they just studied more, or worked a longer working week, or saved more, which is a good thing. So in other words, economic growth by itself, even with the same sort of temperaments and concern for each other, would mean there'd be far fewer children drowning in ponds, for example, <laughs> quite possibly. <laughs> there seems to be evading the, uh, the issue. I mean, it's, high, it's a hypothetical no, situation. I'm turning it back upon him. He should be arguing, not that you should rush in and save the child, but why hasn't he been saving for all of his adult life and arguing for um, capitalism? Because Hobbes had a good answer to this. Because Which he should have been doing. People said, why, why, why you know, will people just dive in and save the child? And they'll do so without thinking. Hobbes says, what about the ones who can't swim? Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's a shallow pond. They can cry for help. Yeah. It would be a cry for help. Finally, to the chap at the end. Yes. Yeah. Well, there was a case where a school child was uh, left to drown by people who said they didn't have the training. Police officers. Yeah. 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 And he was one of the officers. I think it's just three foot deep. You couldn't have made it. I was going to just make a slight addendum to the unemployment thing. I mean, the fact that we are a welfare state too precludes any mass people borders. It's just going to work. I mean, you just can't... Or, or, also, or it would destroy the welfare state, also, so let them in. Also, as well as um, also, if you use the idea that um, 
it's been kind to the poor to let them come in. In fact, the presses are poor. You have to compete mm. with them for a smaller and smaller labour market because of the mass migration. It's just an obvious economic thing. Sorry, we're competing with the mass migration. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, if you're getting four pounds well, an hour, ah, yeah. there's, there's five. But the point is, to, yeah, but they, 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 they'll generate. Uh, uh, so much new production by division of labour that the, the, the money the, you have in real terms. That's the production is necessary, which it might well, not be. Uh, well, uh, if, it, if, if there's no demand for it, it won't be bought. But as there's always um, an infinite number of useful things you can do, more division of labour will increase the amount of wealth in the country, and the, whatever the, the nominal value of your income. The real value ought to go up because now output goes no, up. Out, we all, basically output's gone up. Output yeah. goes up. And output yeah. going up, of course. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. all these little trinkets. False demand. Yeah. Trinkets. Well, no, we need, to, need to get to the end of this demand yeah. 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 Output going up is the only way how you can boost demand. There's no other way of boosting demand. You know, inflation doesn't boost demand, but uh, but output going up. With extra workers producing more, will boost. And this, Keynes was almost right on this because he said there's a difference between the real wage and the nominal wage. But if you get people back to work, the real wage, no matter what it is nominally, is bound to go up because of output. Well, that's, that's absolutely right. That's part of Keynes, and that's part of Keynes that's right. Uh, what, where he's wrong is that he, 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 he thought, where he's wrong is he thought that money could stimulate demand, mm -hmm. and he thought demand could. Exactly what you think. Uh, You've got the Keynesian idea. Think, you I thought demand could be lacking. But also... Demand is only lacking if you've got enough output. Wait a minute. Yeah. I don't agree that output creates demand. But also, but, his, but I, think his, uh, I think his key point was to do with uh, trinkets. That, that you're producing something which is unnecessary. Now, what's necessary... Uh, uh, if, if people are buying these trinkets, it's because they get more utility from these so-called trinkets than anything else they could possibly spend their money on at, you know, get that, that amount of money, whatever it was. Maybe they only spent a pound on trinkets, but there was nothing else around that was worth more to them than those trinkets were for a pound. So, uh, so well, anyway, one man's trinket is another man's necessity. Who's to I'm say... Yeah. Most people have to drink milk. They don't, well, they don't need to do certain other sorts of things. Most people have to drink milk. Well, yes. You know, have to? Well, not unless. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I don't drink milk. I don't think an awful lot of people don't drink milk. Some people okay, can't maybe, drink milk. Maybe, maybe I used to know a chap who, who, who had is, a point of milk a day. It is, it, is, it, is, it is something that actually, you know. It's, okay, it's, I mean, there are, certain, there are things which are biological necessities that we have to buy. I mean, I don't, and I don't bread, deny that. You but, say bread. I mean, but, yes, but, you say but, possibly a But bread. when we do an economic analysis, uh, uh, it's always not done on the terms of what is essential or necessary for life, but, um, uh, you know, the value for the individual consumer at the margin. And uh, at the margin, even though he needs to have food or whatever, uh, he'd rather spend something on this trinket or whatever. Uh, it, it, this, it might be, for instance, a very, very silly superhero film, another one. Uh, well, people want to watch them. I don't know why, but they do. Um, and they should be allowed to. Oh, no, I totally agree. Uh, I totally yeah. agree. I just think demand for these sort of things will actually fall off. If you do had such a saturated economy through mass migration. Oh, gee, saturated. The first time I went to America, I went into a supermarket that was a real supermarket. And I I thought I oh, I, I thought I knew what a supermarket was. All the supermarkets I'd seen in this country are corner shops by comparison with the real and because there is all this idea, is uh, 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 the idea is absolutely terrible. You've got so many choices, and you know, I thought it was wonderful. So many different varieties of so many different things. I didn't uh, resent it and think, oh, now I can't possibly choose what to eat or what to buy. Uh, 
ultimately, of course, it won't simply be a lot of close competition, but genuinely new products. As people who arrive here will arrive with intelligence and it actually innovate things that hadn't even occurred to people before, as well as... To, to counter so, this argument with the supermarkets, with the masses of stuff, yeah. all these supermarkets and masses of stuff are, are quietly sort of being shelved. Actually, that's why Lidl and Aldi are very popular, because they just have a, a range of a few basic things, and people just buy those. Therefore, they buy them in bulk, and they can make them much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So actually, some of this mass, you know, um, you know, um, uh, what do you call it, the sort of ability to choose between all mm. these dozens and dozens of products that do the same thing. It's well, of, some people want it, some people don't. I, 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 but it's I, dying I, off, isn't it? It's dying off, that sort of... No, it's not dying off. It's just... Uh, it's just good. It's not dying off. Aldi and Lidl are not going to take over, but um, very uh, definitely. They're not going to take over, it's just, it's just getting to be in competition at the yeah. moment. The that's, that's the thing. That's 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 yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's just a thought I had, uh, and it's not even about economics, or maybe not even about libertarianism, uh, but um, I actually uh, kind of like what you had to say about the child in the pond argument, mm. because I think what, what strikes me is that people like Singer and, and other altruistic movements, or it, I, I think, I think they, they never really get politically relevant. And why is yeah. that? Because I think the uh, moral sentiments, and, and any, which are usually based on kind of some sympathy or emotions we feel, are just yeah. limited in space and time. You know, the idea that, that we would find the same kind of solidarity with like seven billion people around the planet, even if we can read about their various lots and, and, and situations around the world, that we find the same kind of connection with everybody around the world, really? seven million people, that we have, if we step out here, we see a child being attacked, we have a different response. And well, you can, like, you and, see. And, yeah. and, and, and what I'm saying is like any kind of political or moral movement that tries to you have this ambition of mm. like having us uh, feel sympathy and sort of solidarity with seven billion people around the planet, or across generations. You know, even if you know the mm. projections by the climate alarmists were correct, how many people in their daily lives feel the urge to do something that may have a positive effect in 150 years from now is limited because we are biologically not constructed in such a way is to extend our sympathy and moral sentiments. Uh, I, I think people yeah. can only build a moral connection or personal connection with 140 people in that Right. Life, I, um, so in that sense, I think that's why we the expanding right circle. Yeah, yeah, well, I was going to mention, yes, but he's put the expanding circle where Singer says more and more people are included in our moral universe yeah. and not necessarily just people, but also animals. Yeah. And what well, I'm not completely unsympathetic to that. Well, I think that is right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, the thing, when you see on television uh, in China a sort of two-year-old child getting run over and nobody in the street picking it up, and you don't have a moral reaction to this. Oh, uh, uh, um, and you, when you see people starve, you can have a moral reaction. And if, if, if it's a very, very vivid depiction and there's a way of uh, helping them, you might take it. My, my, I think the main point here is not that people are obliged only to care about people very, very like themselves, but the best way to help these other people is simply have free trade with them. That's what they really yeah, need. And that's what we could have. Because it benefits you. You don't oh, free trade. Oh, no, no, for both. For people. both. Yeah. I mean, uh, if I was having free trade, but I was told, uh, you know, if somebody said, you know, this free trade, fund sweatshops, I'd say good, because those people are therefore getting paid more than they would have done in any other way, and uh, it's helping them get into the free market. And uh, But if somebody said, uh, you know, the, the, these uh, wonderful shoes you've made out of, uh, you know, made out of human skin, I said, well, no, I don't want to, but they're really marvellous, long-lasting shoes. And I said, I don't I, if you telling me this really people are suffering and hurting as a result of my purchase, no, I don't want to. So it's always, there's nothing wrong with mixed motives. Most motives are mixed motives. Most things we do, we have several reasons for doing it. Some of those reasons will be moral, and the morality there is very real. It's just a percentage, maybe. And there's a bit of self-interest as well. And 
there's nothing wrong with having all of these things together. So I like the fact that I buy something that I want, that's useful to me, and I'm helping somebody at the same time, on a completely voluntary basis. And that's the system that works, and that's the system that will get rid of, and is getting rid of, world poverty and disease. It's completely just Hans Rosling on this. He says, you know, time and time again, less poverty, less disease, uh, better education. It's happening everywhere. Now, Rosling didn't completely uh, push or even understand or accept the libertarian line here, but he partly saw this is the free market that's doing this. He partly saw it was. But if we fully see that it is, you say, for God's sake, get rid of the EU. It's a cause of poverty, disease, and misery around the world that would just be disappearing at a far faster rate if we simply had free trade with these countries. Bob, did you want to? Uh, back to the channel of the pond. Yes. whole thing must be an incredibly wet. <laughs> uh, uh, I perhaps I make it quite clear yep. that um, Singer, is it? Singer. Yeah. Singer ought to feel there is a moral obligation upon him to be a libertarian and to save a great deal of money if at all possible. Why is he invested? Because you can save people from ills the more you are materially and spiritually equipped to do so. Therefore, he should be arguing for laissez-faire capitalism, surely. Well, he, he sees some of the economic arguments as do the followers, the effective altruists. But the way they interpret it is instead of uh, becoming médecin sans frontières or whatever uh, you or, or becoming a doctor you get the highest paid job in the city that you can and then give away as much as you can. So they interpret it as using the market to get the income to then give it away. Um, they're overlooking the, 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 the solution that's staring them in the face, which is it's the market that's solving the problem so fast, so globally, so completely, uh, uh, that the money that they're giving away, it, it might do some good, but if they were to do invest it, maybe it would do even more good. Yeah. Uh, so, though, are you telling me that you left this child in the pond because you were on the way to the bank to invest your money? <laughs> is, that your, is this your excuse? No, no, but if people that, uh, 30 years ago had invested more, the park that had railings around the pond, and a park keeper look out for people, for you do it. Still there. Yes, pri pri I mean, private, a private park with a with a proper parky, as we used to call them, and so forth, uh, would never get into that situation. <laughs> in a sense, it's not completely irrelevant to point out that he's presuming something uh, which is anti propertarian and property is the solution. Pat? Tom, I'm just... Okay, yeah, okay, very quickly. I don't think... Uh, see, when did Singer write this? What 72. 72. Well, he obviously didn't read, or maybe he did, I don't know, about the, the priest that rescued him as a child from the river. That's nice. Yeah. Anyway, that's a... Anyway, that's a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If someone shot it, it would be so nice. Because the country number one is nine. It's all. So we just have these two. Two last ones then. It's Tom and Tristan. Yeah. Tom and Tristan then for the last ones. I think the pond situation is a bit. It's a it's an old school tragedy. A more modern interpretation would be, you know, a kid gets stabbed on the street and he's covered in blood and you're driving past your car, would you throw him in your car and take him to the hospital? You know, where you know, it doesn't matter how much investment has happened and are you going to make that decision to do that? You know, because you can argue the pond should have railings and it should be so deep, should be guards. Here's a, a, something that actually happened and you can do something about it. That, I think, is a more accurate... Mm. I want to make sure that the chap who stuck the knife and isn't hanging around 
yeah. you know. Uh, if I, yeah, but then it's part of his assumption that you're completely safe. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, all that's going to happen here is he's going to bleed on your upholstery yeah, a bit. Yeah, my brand new BMW, I just made yeah. it from the, the dealer and I'm going to throw this kid who's going to bleed all yeah. over the car. But again, you know, I, and I would, I would say that would be the sort of thing that would be included. Uh, it might make more sense to, if we're being practical, uh, uh, apply pressure to the wound and have the ambulance arrive than it would be to put the child in the car and drive to the hospital. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Really, what would be the point of ponds? We just had loads of radiance around it. No fun on it. <laughs> and and, 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 um, and the, the guy who goes out of the pond, he probably has to go to the loo occasionally. I mean, this thing, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. if you get in the, the okay. property, can not, never okay. control yeah. accidents and people. Oh, there will always be accidents. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk with yeah. swimming pools and the tenders, people yeah. still dry it. Die at the bottom of the pool. Yeah. Last question. Just, just, if I can just interject yeah. in the check on that, on that point. Well, well, yeah, but that point shouldn't have been made, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Christian, the yeah. last point. Um, I, I think that's from one. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll make very briefly two points. One, I think that the sort of society that I would like to live in is the society where the man who has watched the child drowned in a shallow pond um, would not be able to look himself in the mirror the next day and, and the following days. In other words, it's a sort of society where people have a kind of moral value where they say, I have to intervene because I am in a position where I can do it. Now, you do have this when you see a child drowning in a shallow pond. Mm. Um, we hear about you know, people dying on the other side of the world and, and so on. And as <coughs> David Hume said, you know, I hear about Lisbon being earthquake. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, ravaged by a, an earthquake, but I continue my breakfast uh, because it is far away. And I know that it is exactly what um, uh, uh, the um, uh, sorry, um, pink uh, not pink, singer, but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, singer. Uh, singer, singer is is trying to um, get us to um, ch uh, change our worldview. In mm -hmm. other words, to say, well, what is far should be to us as close as what is what, what the child is with drowning. But you can't do this. And actually, the person was mentioned this, that you can't do it, is actually Karl Marx, who said, you know, there is a mediation of money, there is a mediation of we are separated from the end product. In other words, in the same sort of way, uh, because what we are doing is simply giving money to a, a, a charity that then will spend that money in Africa or whatever, mm. um, it's not the same thing as if you are doing it yourself. Because there you are in control of the end result. You are the person who are making that share. You are the person who are saving that um, uh, child who is drowning. And that immediacy that the, the, is what makes us sort of fully aware of our capacities. Well, that immediacy may increase, as they say, you are flying this drone, and which mm. has the medicine and the samples and you can and are you you who's control are you going to give it to this child or this mother or yeah but yeah. and that that would be a very good thing and i think more and more people i mean i, I have a friend for instance with uh, you know with a couple of other friends and mm -hmm. so on they are financing a little school in ethiopia mm -hmm. you know and and they do it uh, without you know just themselves they they are, they are not an ngo and so on they mm -hmm. simply decided yeah let's pool our resources and and do this that is my first point. Second point is simply a question. Um, what, if, we, if you say that you know, we have to disband the European Union because it is protectionist and oh, yeah. against and so on, uh, we should disband the United States for the same reason, oh, yeah. or Japan for the same reason. But why target only the European Union? Um, or maybe the it's an extra layer. The European Union, Union is, is, uh, is, a, is yeah. a work in progress. And, the, and those, those are faith accomplished. Well, the, what, well, the, the uh, best best to nip it in the boat before it gets fully evil like the others. The, 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 it, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> there is some virtue in having 
uh, lots of competition between states rather than one big state. Ah. So that there's nowhere to escape to. Um, um, I shall now break one of the rules of argument and argue ad Hitlerum, <laughs> which is had there been a United States of Europe and had Hitler got elected, as he was in Germany, well, that would be that. Yeah. No need to invest, no need to invade anywhere else. You're already in charge. Now, so I think a little bit of competition among different nation states, whilst not being uh, anywhere near private property anarchy, is a hell of a lot better than having a United States of Europe. Yes, I'd like to break up the United States of America as well. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to hear you uh, say that argument mm. because we have a situation where you are people fleeing countries with dictators mm. in the worst possible situation where their lives is yeah. at risk yeah. and we are saying don't come here. Yeah. So in other words, well, the was argument, that was said to had, the Jews. That was said to the Jews. Well, was, exactly. And it was but terrible. It, but it, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So what, what we are saying is that w having a multiplicity of small yeah. states doesn't help because each oh. small state will say, oh, don't come here. So well, the argument that will we, they could, all? we could will cross the border and so No, because we, uh, we are experiencing it today. Yeah. We are experiencing today. Yeah. We have people fleeing Syria, fleeing all these places, yeah. and we say, don't come here. Mm. So uh, unless you have an authority that is above, that say, well, let people migrate, let people move, that is not going to happen. And the beautiful thing about the European mm. Union is that it is not democratic. And therefore, you <laughs> yeah. cannot elect a Hitler. And yeah. the other beautiful thing... He will just arise as though well, <laughs> by, not, not without being same. elected. And, and also the one thing... That, the, the one thing that worked with Hitler yes. is that it was that appeal to the German nation. It was that appeal to uh, the, 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 the people of, of Germany. We are a culture, we are... and so on and so on. Yes. Uh, the good thing about the European Union is that it is totally bureaucratic and no one dies for bureaucracy. Well, so was the Soviet Union, though. Yeah. So the Soviet Union was... Uh, is probably, it, probably the, 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 the bad well, thing... And, and, and at the, time, the bad uh, thing about it is it, it's an extra layer of regulation and taxation yeah, well, on we, top of what you already had in your country anyway. Yeah, well, uh, well, So you have less freedom and less money. Yeah, no, no, I'm but, not saying that it is a beautiful thing. I mean, I, you know, I, I think there are a lot, of, a lot of arguments against the European Union, but uh, it's not the arguments that, you know, you, you were saying earlier. Okay.